Hello, you beautiful people. Welcome back to the Long Term Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Villa. Today, we have man of God, entrepreneur, father, husband, and server, Brandon Barber. We will discuss the role of a father, passions leading to freedom, how faith has a positive influence on one's life, beating addiction, and finding that change is possible in all cases. Brandon is a good friend of mine. We met through work, shout out to ATS, and he is a ball of energy, and I'm so glad, so happy to have him on. Everyone, welcome. Brandon Barber, ladies and gentlemen. Are this we is, rolling? Yeah. Oh, we are right. We are in. How we do we it? are live. <laughs> it's an honor to be here. Yeah. Uh, my first podcast. Yeah. So, man, I, I'm surprised because you are, you should have your own podcast. I've always wanted to be on one. Mm-hmm. It's just dreams come true. Yeah. When you mentioned it, I was like, <laughs> oh, man, I was telling everyone. Yeah. Like, dude, I might be on a podcast. Yeah. And my mentor's like, dude, you're going to be famous. <laughs> I think this podcast is going to be a great episode and a lot of people would learn a lot from it. I hope so. Yeah. Because you have a younger, so far it's been, it's been a younger audience, yeah, but there audience. are like people, I have sent the link to people that I, we, we've worked with yeah. at ETS. Oh, cool. And so some of them are listening. Wow. Sherry, Kim. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Am I the oldest guy in the podcast so far? I think so. But I uh, one of these days, so, I want to ask like Kim or Sherry because they have a lot of great lessons. Sometimes, yeah, it's like age like a fine wine. Right? Yeah, you got a lot yeah. of experience. So yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I can add yeah. some value. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah, the headphones are comfortable. Everything's comfortable. You're good. It's feeling great. Cool. Yeah. Um. So, first question. Uh, how does one become a good father? Did you always know you wanted to be a father? It's a good question. Uh, I had the excuse that the world is so crazy. Why bring kids into the world? And it was my wife at the time that mentioned maybe that's our responsibility to change that. Mm -hmm. So that changed. I was like, hmm, interesting, because it freaked me out. Change kind of freaked me out. Um, I wanted to be a dad, but that was around 2012 when you, you heard the world was ending and what I've come to learn is there's always chaos in the world. Um, and I'm glad I didn't listen to that inner thought. And I'm glad my wife mentioned that because, and then it's getting around men of character. I started ditching old friends that I had bad habits with, got around guys that were father power and really strong in the home. And it started to get me to reflect on my dad and what he did for us. And my parents had a good marriage. So I was like, yeah, I want to install that. So we planned for it. And it was it was such an honor to be able to say we planned for this child. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people ask that when you have kids. They'll be like, was she or he a, people don't really say mistake anymore, but they'll say like a surprise. We're like, no, we actually planned for this. Mm-hmm. So that was really cool. And um, yeah, what is it to be a father? Mm-hmm. was the first part. Um, I would say showing up taking ownership, showing vulnerability, and being present. Those are huge because, like, I asked my mom, she was complaining about, like, she was pretty worked up about my dad. He's a pretty sick guy. And I was like, hey, mom, now, what can you say one nice thing about him? And I forget what she said, but then she asked me, what about you? Can you say one nice thing about your father? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I love his vulnerability. And she's like, vulnerability, dad? I was like, yeah, he, um, he always, whenever he would lose his cool, or we were three boys, right? So we drove him nuts. Three boys. Yeah, so we had wrecking yeah. all his stuff and just testing them. And uh, I don't know how they survived that. But um, he, I remember when he would get upset and if he yelled at us, he would come up. I like vividly remember as a child, he would come up pretty quick after that. I'd go to my room and cry. And he'd come up and, sit and like pet my hair and say, hey, buddy, you know, I love you. And I'm sorry I acted that way. To me, that showed vulnerability. I don't know if that's vulnerability, but that's what it felt like to me. Well, we make mistakes. Father, son, daughter, yeah. man of God. Mm-hmm. Right? We all make mistakes. Right. And it's about accounting for 
those mistakes and bringing light that you are imperfect. That's good. Right? Yeah. That's why I brought this. Yeah. <laughs> Counting and there are, mistakes. there are things that we give into. There's temptation. There are ways that we do not fulfill our role as best as we can be. Mm -hmm. And it's to ask for forgiveness, not only to our friends and family, but to God as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Um, I agree. Uh, so did you always know you wanted to be a father? Yeah. I, um, like yes and no. Like I was kind of selfish growing up. It was all about me. And I just re recently learned it's not about me and it's not in my hands. And with my faith, it's all in his will. And I, it's, it's their gift to me. So, um, but what it's actually, I had a dream too, because I also, I didn't really have the desire to be a dad, but I remember we weren't married yet. And I had this vivid dream when we had, we had just moved out of my parents' house, me and my wife, and we had our own little like suite uh, here in the park. And, um, I remember having a dream holding a baby girl and it felt really real. And I was like, this is my baby. Like, it's, it's a that's sign. Her. It was a sign. And I remember telling Chantel about that, mm -hmm. my wife and I'll never forget that dream and that inspired me. It was weird. It was like I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't get it out of my head. I was like, how like what was that? That was yeah. and that changed something in my heart to be like a little more comfortable. Like cause we still talk about should we have another child? Mm -hmm. We're getting, you know, she's 42, 41, I'm 36. So we're getting up there and like having kids. Mm -hmm. So we yeah, but I don't know. And then we even talk about like should I get uh fixed? Or not, and she cries when I talk about that because like I'm I'm satisfied with three kids. We've done good. I want to start planning our like life together when they're growing up. And uh, something feels weird on my heart when I think about going to a doctor to do that. And then I just realize that like, she's gonna be she's getting close to hitting menopause, so it might just naturally come. And I just talked to my dad about that too, where he's like, yeah, I went and got the work done, and then your mom got menopause, so it's kind of like. <laughs> pointless and he's like well, I don't know why I did that so I'm just gonna let it run its course and see what happens because with our third we were just talking should we or shouldn't we and it happened and before you know it so God was like well oh, it's already happening so you never know you never know what comes your way so yeah I, I would say yeah I'm, I'm just glad we did do it and what are some of the greatest lessons you have learned from having children it's a good question um I got to counter you with a question with that. Um, sure. How do kids spell love? How do kids spell love? With that letter L-O-O-V-E? Mm -hmm. that... It's actually what I've learned is T-I-M-E. T-I-M-E. Time. Oh, okay. Time. Because I find like you can read books on five levels of love language. It's a really good book. Um Kids, what I've noticed with mine and most other kids too, they just want time with mom and dad. That's all they care about is time. And that's their love language. Like they just, they wake up in the morning. They're my little alarm clock. They just, daddy, that's why a lesson is so important. Like put your phone, if I'm on my phone, which I am a lot, you all are. I think the stats on how much we touch our phone a day is scary. It's nuts. It's, it's, it's crazy. People, I, that's, it's the one addiction that a lot of people don't really view as an addiction, but I, I think I, I'll admit I am addicted to my oh phone my and gosh. I don't think I've gone a day without my phone yeah. for years now. And we, we, it's like adapt or die. We do need it, mm -hmm. but there's times where you can set the example and I've been doing it with my parents cause I'm back visiting. So when they come in the room to talk to me and I'm on my phone, I'll put it down yeah. in a way yeah. and it's showing them that it's like, I'm mm -hmm. giving you my time. Mm -hmm. Cause I think Simon Sinek said that when you have your phone out, yeah. you're kind of showing that person that you're not value to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so I would say time, um, and I do experience that with my little brother cause mm -hmm. I, I spent a lot of time. He, he just turned six and we're closer, right? He, we're yeah, because, tight relationship. yeah, very tight. And Amazing. that's because I put in the time mm -hmm. on the weekend sometimes. And I do get to know him what's happening at daycare or what's, mm -hmm. what's happening here. What are you playing? Uh, I press on his interests. I ensure that he feels loved, protected. Wow. And as you said, time is a big, you sure you can tell a kid, I love you. Mm -hmm. 
but then like your actions speak louder than words, right? Yeah. To, to them, sure, me, dad, mom, brother did say they love me, but they're not spending time with me. So mm. is that that's good? Is that really? Is it really genuine? Mm. Or are they too busy? Am I just an option for them? Right. Ooh. And he probably looks up to you as a mentor. Yeah. Yeah. You can just I just see that on Instagram, like you're mm-hmm. just like yeah. his protector in a way. Yeah, I see that, and I, I I see that he's just soaking up all the information around him, mm-hmm. and I do tell uh, tell him that oh TikTok is bad for you, like all mm-hmm. this short term dopamine. He may not get it now, but later on. Yeah. Um, but then again, it he lives in that the generation where. Mm-hmm. It is very, it's prevalent. Mm -hmm. He's going to grow up one day and it's just going to be a tool for him. And it's going to look back and Mm -hmm. realize, okay, how do I use this properly? Have healthy boundaries around it. Yeah, Mm because too much of anything. Yeah. Too much of anything. Even spending time with people, too much is, is, you need that distance. Yeah. Influence Mm -hmm. too is super important. Um, Mm -hmm. There, a lot of people are first thing in the morning, hour away from the phone. And hour before night, if I could give any advice there, try that out. So yeah. I think the young generation, Gen, Gen Z, is that? Yeah, that's, that's it. And then um, you were, you're a millennial. Yeah. Yeah. We're the millennials. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're always complaining about the baby boomers. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, they, there's this number that they would sleep with their phone under their pillow. And really? I was talking to my pastor about that. He's pretty young too. He's and uh, he's like, yeah, my wife does that. I like, why? They're like, just so they can hear the beep go, or like they're ready to like. So that's pretty crazy that it's under their pillow. It's just connected to you. It's like almost like we're all cyborgs. Hey? Yeah, man. It's yeah. I just want to have you want to have that healthy detachment and to sh- to sh- model that for your kids because there was actually one day this was crazy. My daughter had my hat on and she likes to sleep in my shirts like at nighty, and she had her my phone and she was like like what are you doing she yeah. was like i'm daddy and that was a big <laughs> eye opener oh man oh, really yeah when was this this was before we left so about a year ago and that was a big eye opener because when she's like i'm daddy like as a sure it's a joke to her right just trying to mimic you but seen. isn't that just so scary mm-hmm. just seeing that whoa that is what you notice that's when i realized i was yeah. like oh i gotta we gotta yeah, put these things yeah. down so you when gotta... they come around the corner just put it away Mm-hmm. Um, and another lesson I would say is I have three girls and I find people might not agree with this, but they build their self image if daddy's in the home. Mm-hmm. So they build their self image around dad. So if dad's treating mom good, they're going to eventually want a guy in the future that like, I have lots of friends and they're like, I married my father. I'm like, it's interesting. So if, yeah, no, I see that too with a lot of people that I've talk to and, and I've been in their houses and yeah. I've seen the way they interact and they tell me about their relationship with their fathers. Mm. That's kind of the people, the type of people that they marry. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, you got to watch how you're treating mom, how you're talking to them, it, just looking good too, like dressing, not like to be, just try to keep yourself clean because then you're, you're modeling for them, right? So, Presentable. yeah, exactly. So those are, that, that, those are really two good lessons I could give on uh yeah what's like being a father and you practice what you preach yeah because sure yeah. sure you may tell your kid hey don't go on your phone as much hey mm-hmm. read more hey you need to forgive you need to not give into your your emotions as much you yeah. need to pray you yeah. need to study mm-hmm. but if you're out there smoking if you're mm-hmm. out there watching tv all day on your phone yeah. giving into your anger they're just gonna think you're a liar yeah right i'm they, not they, seeing the fruit on the tree here yeah right? yeah yeah the, the the fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree and that's what we all have to work on constantly i think is yeah like who and we get that with church right like you who are you monday to friday and saturday and then church yeah i'm kind of a different person and then it's like i'm gonna go home and have beers it's like yeah. You're living two worlds and mm-hmm. the kids are watching. My pastor said something that what he, one of his friends remember his parents vividly and what led him to a really good path was his parents were active with praying, but not pushing it. Like you said, like you need to do this. They would just do it and the kids would go down and catch them doing that. Like just worshiping or yeah. just giving awesome. into God. Yeah. So pretty cool. One thing I've, uh, we've implemented as a family here because we used to be a very kind of broken, mm-hmm. toxic family. 
everybody was disconnected. Sure, mm-hmm. there were a lot of good moments, and mm-hmm. I had certainly had a, a childhood that was filled with love. Yeah. But at the same time, if the negativity is so much more powerful than the positive, so if you don't repair or try to repair the negativity, yeah, it just you. overtakes the positivity. It eats everyone it's up. It's like a darkness. Yeah. Darkness. But now, we before we eat, before we everybody goes to bed, everybody's got their own prayer. It's mm. gratitude. It's about um, just forgiveness mm. and asking God to armor the mind, body, soul for tomorrow, tomorrow's challenges. So I think that structure of gratitude, forgiveness, and asking for strength yeah. is such a great structure for, and it's worked and it's made our family yeah. so much more just our prayers. Yeah key strong i notice when we don't pray yeah as a family day feels weird and like yeah just your shield's yeah. not up yeah that's amazing yeah. you don't feel as resilient you don't feel as whole mm. right but that your dad was like hey guys here's what we're gonna do no we i, I tried to implement that it. was you yeah i, I don't want to take all Leader. the credit about it Leader. but everybody everybody kind of did their own part amazing and yeah we went from this family of just destruction to now we you know, it's never easy. It's still never easy, but still, it's we try our best, and that's that's the thing that matters. It's the only thing that matters. So, I heard that you, that a person isn't fully mature when they do don't have kids of their own. Now, do you think this is true? Uh, again, yes and no. Uh, for me, yeah, I definitely noticed change when I had my first child in two thousand fifteen. We had Naira. And I remember having a beer and holding her. Like, I had a beer and I was like, what am I doing? I had, like, a coconut bottle beer. I was like, I felt like kind of like a deadbeat. And that's, it just felt wrong. It felt off. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, I, I shouldn't be drinking. I didn't like the feeling anymore. Like, because I went from drinking and smoking pot like crazy. Like, I was a huge chronic pot smoker. Yeah, you were telling me. And then I, it just started to feel different and... Uh, it changed me, and then I noticed with my so my two brothers, there's there's difference there. Like one has uh, seems to have more struggles right now, and my the stress might be there of having two. And then I did notice with another brother that his attitude has shifted. He's used to be kind of like I don't even know, not like just like a wonderful person, but he had. It seemed like I had a lot of anger, and I just noticed a huge change of attitude after having his first child. And, it, and like, they're, they're not even married. Um, I don't think he has full custody right now, too, and he still has, like, a good attitude about it. So, and my parents are like, I've noticed a huge change in him since he's had that kid. And I'm like, oh, cool. And then I just saw them recently. I'm like, wow, what a difference. And I don't know what it is. Like, I think when you have something that you've created and this comes from me and you're looking at it and see the features it has of you and your wife, girlfriend, it's just, it does something to you. I can't not. But I think people will use excuses too. Like, oh, I don't, you don't know how hard this is. This is why I drink. It's not easy raising kids. It's just choice. So that's a good question. I, I just, for me, it definitely did change. Changed the everything. way my dad described it was just, you look at this purse, this baby mm-hmm. and it's not just when you make a decision right? yeah. whether it it be to drink to not go to work mm-hmm. to just lay around mm-hmm. it's not just you that suffers now yeah you got another person human relying being. on you. a human being <laughs> now crazy. all see i i don't have a child one day i plan to have one yeah uh, all my life it's really been about me yeah but then that's right not to the extent of having my own child, but when I realized, oh, I do have a brother, I am a son, I am mm-hmm. a friend, and I do see that there is suffering in the world, I, I was sobered up. And not, mm-hmm. not that I was a big drinker, but it yeah. kind of enlightened me, mm-hmm. and it filled me with purpose to, to internalize that, oh, mm-hmm. there are people out there. I don't ju- have to be just be a father yeah. for other people to rely on me. There yeah, are yeah. friends out there. Mm-hmm. There, There's... God gave you that opportunity to be able to help people and yeah. to improve yourself and to give to the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it takes you, it forces you to take your eyes off yourself, mm-hmm. put it onto them. It's cool to see my brothers and how they parent. And uh, it just, it definitely brings something out of people. 
Yeah. That's for sure. It's responsibility. You have no choice. And you did mention that it is an excuse for people to go down a bad path too. Yeah. Right. There, it's, the it victim. happens. Yeah. The victim of oh, since there is that responsibility, mm-hmm. I I'm not ready. Mm-hmm. I I feel burdened. Yeah. I'm not. I'm flawed. Yeah. Why do I deserve this? Yeah. And there's there's two choices. It, it's always choice yeah. and perspective. Yeah. Um, my wife gets me in front of a lot. She's such a mama brat, but she wants to spend every second with them. And some people are like, that's not healthy, but that's what she loves. She knows that these kids are growing up before her eyes, and one day they're going to be off doing their thing. Mm-hmm. So you need to cherish it. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just, it, it does change us. Um, and, yeah, and you have to f- remember that your partnership and Props to the single parents out there. That's not easy. I don't. Yeah. Um, when I see a single mom, I'm like, you warrior. I yeah. guess. And they're doing everything they can. It's amazing to see that. I see single parents and they are <clears throat> troopers or warriors. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. it's not easy for the kid, right? I think people ask, ask, how did you end up the way you did? I think because I had a mother. It wasn't perfect. They fought and stuff, but Mm -hmm. we had a mom and dad in the home. And I think that's made a huge impact on my brothers because I see what we've, our friends that didn't necessarily have that. They had no fatherhood in the home and they've had uh, some pretty huge struggles. A lot of them are in and out of jail. And I think Mm -hmm. there's the status of people, a man that are in jail didn't have a father in the home. So it's so important to, whether he's there working or not, it doesn't have to be a full-time dad, but there has to be, if you can have both, that's such a bonus, mom and dad, because you get the nurturing of the mom and like the testosterone mm-hmm. of the dad, but yet the vulnerability, the discipline of like resiliency, because yep. the, the different roles, right? And yeah. I find that I do see that in some of my friends who grew up with a single parent household, and there is a big difference, whether it be the mom mm-hmm. only or the dad yeah. only. And there's lack of compassion there's a lack mm. of maybe discipline sometimes and oh yeah even then i have i grew up and there was always uh, my, my stepmom mm-hmm. and my, my dad and they were they're good to me and i can yeah. i'm very grateful to have them and i love them very much yeah. and even i growing up i had a lot of nurture from my mom mm-hmm. and my dad was never left me to you know fend for myself mm. he was always there yeah now in retro in retrospect i ponder on what my life would look like if I didn't have these th- these figures in my life, yeah. these role models. And completely I would... Different path. Com- yeah, completely. And honestly, the chances of it being worse off is yeah. probably a lot higher without oh, yeah. the parents that are there for us to nurture. Yeah. And to go out into the world and the influence yeah. is there, right? There's. I think I saw a video of logic the rapper and he was like meeting up with his dad for the first time in a while wow. and he was like bawling and being like you, you i don't mean to come at you but you weren't there you weren't there you didn't show up you i waited i was that little boy waiting at this the curbside and you just weren't there and yeah. it's affected him his whole life like yeah. so yeah you get if you can have mom and dad in the home and just investing into your kids and being their primary influence is huge. So they're the, they're the next generation. Literally. And I've seen those clips of, uh, you ever seen those re- rehearsals or like uh, plays at school and, mm. or, or maybe in movies where like the kid is like looking around they, like for the dad yeah. and then eventually they see him. But then it's, it's heartbreaking. Like, it's very, it's, it's happy when they do show up, but then yeah. imagine if they just didn't. Oh, gosh. Yeah. It's just like, and there's so many kids that don't have, yeah, them. it's just so soul crushing this, yeah, because I always had my parents. They showed up to every single rehearse uh, recital. Yeah, every single play in school. That's right. And looking back, what if they? What if I didn't have that? And I do oh. know some kids that didn't have that. Yeah. Like I now I look back, and I'm just filled with gratitude. I'm mm. filled with, okay, this is sure my life's not perfect. Yeah. But there are my 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 dad, my mom. Yeah, they, they were there for me. And it's so important when you go back and reflect on that, like yeah. that, thank you for showing, it makes you want to honor your mother and father more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like it just like, you want to get back. Sometimes it drives us nuts mm-hmm. right? like, cause I'm back with my parents <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, ah, but then I like think I'm like, they did everything they had with what they had and what they could. Yeah. And it resets you to be like, yeah. honor your mother and father. I was talking to my buddy and he had said that it's their first time in life as well. 
Right? It's all our first times. That's right. We, and then nobody gets a guidebook for yeah. to be a father. It's not like we had 10 years of experience. Yeah. Having, that's you, didn't go to, you didn't go to school to be a father, did you? It just nobody, happens and you got to yeah, yeah. go with I think it. it's the one thing that nobody really prepares you for, like and being a parent. You're right. And like school didn't teach us how there's the class for fatherhood 101 or how to be a good yeah. husband. So yeah. you sort of go out into the world. Which I wish we did have those classes of teach entrepreneurship or teach yeah. like how to be a better person or you know it's just kind of no it's on the means to make money which is very vain and mm -hmm. that does not fill no. the uh, never ending void of just wanting more and more and more and when is it ever going to be enough that's right we yeah. we see that in ourselves all the time yeah um, any advice for new parents um, yeah. Um, for moms to make what's been huge in our relationship is people notice that when I come home, my kids make a big deal and they come running to the door and my wife modeled that. I don't know where she picked that up from. I think other leaders and parents that are like full-time parents. And uh, so she just gets excited when I get home. So it starts with mom. So she's like, daddy, I always hear my wife. And it's not like doing it for show. Like she just makes a big deal. And then the kids stop what they're doing. And they come running. Best feeling ever. Mm -hmm. I remember waiting like a little puppy at the back door for my dad to come home at four o'clock every day. I had a little piece of gum for him. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was dentine cinnamon. I always remember climbing on the counter, pulling it out. And uh, we have friends that are like, my kids don't even notice when I come home. So I was like, and it's usually the moms that tell me that, I'm like, make a big deal when dad comes home. He's out working on jobs that not all of us love doing, and you're gone for eight, ten hours a day, just beating your body or whatever it is, and putting on your best, hanging out with uh, employees that you're seeing these people more than your own family, and then you come home, and your kids don't notice. That takes a huge toll. And uh, so that was a big one. So moms make a big deal when daddy comes home. And... Um, I'd say record. I'm really grateful that my dad recorded our childhood. He had like the big old camera that's like a bazooka. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those like things were like a thousand dollars and not a lot of people could afford it back then. So my dad invested into that and I love going back with me and my brother will Matt will watch uh the VHS and they're like falling apart. They're barely hanging on. And like they're like all like the pixels really bad mm -hmm. and some of them like machines eat the tape so we can't really watch them anymore. But we love going back and watching our childhood because, like, it's like Matt running around in his diaper and just doing bad things. <laughs> but it's so, like, cool to see our old Sweet. house mm -hmm. where we grew up, see what our parents looked like when they were younger, mm -hmm. and, like, see my Nana in the corner playing with cards and, like, she's not here anymore. So it's, like, hidden capsules of memories. So I'd say record everything. So that's why I make a big effort to, like, record these little videos on Instagram and then mm -hmm. save them onto my phone so my kids, when if something happens to me, they can go back and look at that. It's amazing. It is kind of hard watching them when they're young, though, because you realize how fast time goes. Yeah. So that's, that's I, a big one. My dad's been doing that for the longest time, too. And at, at first, I was very, just kind of, why are you doing this? I, I was going, I was, like, nine at the time, and... And I'd cover, he'd, he'd pick me up from school and I'd cover my face and I'd be like, what are you doing? This is embarrassing. Oh, so he's recording you. He is recording me. And uh, then now I'm looking back and I go, I, why did I act like that? I should have, hmm. I should have showed my face more. I should have just, he's taken the time, the effort to record me, to time make this memorable. Now it's just, I didn't, I didn't realize it. Now I, there are a bunch of videos of me, pictures, and I look back and I see that. I was loved and I realized mm -hmm. that, oh, it does, it did make a big difference, just the effort. And then he watches it. Sometimes I'll just sit here on the couch right over there and he'll just watch him just by himself. Uh, or, and then what ends up, ends up happening, if he does it long enough, people start noticing. It's like, oh, wait, whose voice is that? Oh. They look over and then next thing you know, the entire family is just watching yeah. home videos. It's something very special. Yeah. 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 It's, it's so special. I'd say record as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Especially at the younger ages too, because it's like Jordan Pierce says, there's that peak moment from like one to four yeah. that you don't get back. Like Rapid it, growth. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's like, I can't believe my oldest is like eight going on nine and like mm -hmm. preteen. That's, that's the one thing, the one, I know social media can be too much. And like, like we said, too much is, an, is, mm. is, is horrible for you. Yeah. But the beauty of social media too is, is it's up, up there. Yeah. Right. It's. Just 
data, memory, because your your mind isn't capable of storing all those yeah. frames. It's crazy. Now you've got a video that can like storage that can yeah. store tens of yeah. trillions of terabytes in your hand like oh, yeah in your hand or as little as you know just like a little memory stick to it. the bazooka yeah yeah <laughs> and that's the beauty of that's it wild. too right and you look back and you realize just maybe at that like some some videos i i look at and um even videos from like last year mm-hmm. or like a couple of years back or even last week mm-hmm. and i'm looking at these videos and i i wasn't maybe mentally i wasn't all like sound, maybe I was worrying about school. I was worrying about, mm. okay, my place in the world, worrying about, oh, am I good enough? But then I was like smiling, I was mm. this, but then I look back and I go, why am I worrying so much? I've got, I'm blessed. I, I've yeah. got everything in front of me. Mm. Why am I, why do I feel so heavy at that point? But then I realized I didn't need to, mm. right? That's, that's kind of the, that's a good thought process that comes to mind sometimes when I do see the moments yeah. where it would amplify it. I could amplify the moments, mm. the happiness. Yeah. Had I just not worried so much. Yeah. yeah. My buddy just grabbed a book, mm. how to stop worrying and start living. And mm. he's talking about the takes on that. And I think as men, we, we worry too much because we're like trying to be the providers. What are we doing with our life? And, um, I don't, I don't see anywhere in the Bible where it says worry though. It's like, what's like, that scripture where it says, look at the birds, they're flying around. Are they worrying about what they're going to mm-hmm. eat? Mm-hmm. And I've noticed that the more you dive in with faith, you do see his blessings. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I know there's like the, well, you get asked a lot. I'm sure you have, if God's so great, why is there starvation? Mm-hmm. Well, are do you have an Xbox? at home get off your butt and go do something it's for us to like make a difference let's mm-hmm. start looking into feeding people and mm-hmm. you know let's not waste our food how much yeah. food do we waste yeah. right like i try to eat every last grain and teach my girls like i'll show them videos of all sorts of countries that are struggling with kids are starving and I'm like this is these kids are eating out of dumpsters so like i see that yeah it's it's perspective and gratitude such a huge thing go back to like what you have right versus i think there's a good quote um sorry i'm going off topic here i'm an add right no, no, um, it's not top, off topic at all what's the quote um your worst day here someone's praying for so yeah. like on the other side of the That's world powerful. someone's praying for what you think you're going through is the worst day that they're praying for like i wish it was that yeah. easy yeah. But we think it's hard a good meal yeah a shower a uh, yeah. a moments in peace with clothes family clothes on her back like, clothes roof over yeah. her head Mm -hmm. um yeah it's uh yeah this is even this podcast i worry but i worry a lot and go oh what if nobody listens what if Mm. it's just it's just me and i'm i'm a a clown people are making fun of me but then it's like you're doing this is this is luxury (laughs) this is i've already got something to eat we've got water here and you're doing what lot might never do they might have Mm. always hummed hod should Mm. i and they won't execute it and you've done it yeah yeah thank you pretty cool to see that no people like you definitely the conversation conversation is very powerful it's so crucial it's one thing that definitely alleviates the suffering i Mm. find for myself and for the people that i've talked to yeah it's because you you forget your own problems or not only that Mm. when you do talk about your problems it's cathartic oh right when you kind of that shared suffering right oh like yeah. if you're talking to someone that's a parent and they're going through like parenting yeah. pain right and yeah. they're going through the struggle of okay how do i provide for this and how do mm-hmm. i be emotionally there or if i'm a student mm-hmm. i i ask about their exams or yeah. um and then we we share we have our worries and then by sharing these problems and mm-hmm. their vulnerability as you said earlier yeah it actually reduces the pain and it bonds yeah. people together you kind of like can normalize yeah. it to know that we're all, yeah. we all suffer in a way and like, yeah, just how do you suffer through it? Yeah. And by yeah. communicating, it's huge. That's a great yeah. way to put it. Yeah. I wouldn't be where I was if, or am, if I hadn't communicate mm-hmm. and reached out to mentors and reached out to people and asked for perspective. Mm-hmm. Very important. Yeah, definitely. If I have those days where I do feel alone and I do feel like the world is on my back mm-hmm. and it's just so dark and I don't see any light. Yeah. Talking to my dad, talking yeah. to my mom, talking to my sister, brother, yeah. or just spending time with them. I don't even have to talk about yeah. it. Just it's such a weight off your shoulders to know that, oh, there are people that do yeah. want to spend time with you, that 
Okay, it's not just all problems. Yeah. There are genuine connection out there. You don't want to keep that in. It's it's yeah. not good. It's yeah. not healthy. Um, you had wanted to talk. You you wanted to talk about freedom, mm. and you had previously said that you were a person that was chained up before, mm -hmm. and now you are. Well, life is not perfect. Mm -hmm. You are free. Yeah, mm. I feel. And freedom is such an interesting thing because you see it on social media right now. It's like, look at your food, look at this. I think you're free, yeah. right? Yeah. And, it's, yeah. and it's, again, I was like that. We're like, we're not free. Mm -hmm. But then you start to look, go look at the other countries yeah. and of what they're going through, whether it's communism or like. So there's a story here that I knew a girl. She was like an Arme Armenian or mm -hmm. from somewhere. And she said all she wanted she would hear the soldiers play the national anthem american and the land of the free right when they say that in the, mm -hmm. the anthem and she said all i wanted to do was experience freedom they weren't allowed to read the women couldn't read and um the fact that we can bring a book like yeah read a yeah. book we take for granted mm -hmm. we're allowed to read a book or have a bible we're allowed to go to school yeah man we're allowed to learn about anything we want right and so she wanted a faith so bad that she just wanted to get her hands on the Bible. So she had to bribe and get the Bible smuggled to her country. And she had to cut her mattress open mm. and hide the Bible. That's, That's how valuable it was to her. Wow. We have Bibles in our hotels. I don't even know if they are still, but mm -hmm. like they're mm -hmm. free here. But she had to pay like $10,000 to get this Bible shipped to her and wow. like risked her life for it. And then... Yeah, so it's like that's freedom to me is if you're not happy where you're at and it's not freedom, like we do have freedom. Like we live in a country where there's not soldiers running through our yards with bullets coming through, right? And uh, that we can choose to start your own business, go to school, uh, freedom enterprise. Um, yeah, it's you just anything and, you want. Yeah, literally. And dreams come true. I think manifestation of writing things down, pen to paper. Um, give it to God and say, if it's in your will, uh, there's things that if you write down, let's say 10 things that you just desire and it's not, it doesn't have to be materialist, but lifestyle. I remember in one of these books, I was going back and it said, I would like, just like to make 10,000 a month. What, and why? Um, because money in the hands of good people can change the world. I find, and it can create a little more security and freedom, time, choice, options. It's not that money's everything, but, and I just, um, it, willing to make the change we talked about for two years I think I even heard me talking about I'm going to move someday I'm, I'm going to be out of yeah, this you job did. you did yeah like because ATS where I was it was a good job and I would get frustrated be like uh, I feel like I'm just a slave to the system nine to five rat race and reach out to my mentor and he's like be enthusiastic about your job because not everyone has a job and people are dying for a job and your job funds your assets. So if you're building something on the side, just remember, be happy about your job because it is funding what you want. And it did. It funded my dreams to travel, buy a motorhome, move my family into it. It was the family vision. And then now we we dictate our worth and we make we own our own we own a couple companies, me and my wife, property manager. So it's like all these opportunities are just sprouting because we were willing to make the change, put it in God's hands and leap of faith and jump. And our life just before we left last year was absolute hell. It was the darkest time of my life. There was addictions, overdoses in family. Um, Shani lost her brother, fentanyl overdose. Oh, I'm sorry to Dad hear. was diagnosed with dementia. Uh, there was family falling out. Um, and it was just like, I was like, what is going on? This is supposed to be my year, it's the new year. I'm like a cat and it was the year of the cat. I'm like, this is supposed to be my year. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until me and Shani just decided, let's just go for our dreams. We can't keep putting a pin on it and pushing it away. Mm -hmm. When is it ever going to be a right time? And we had friends like vouch for us. Like, yeah, we'll find you something lined up. And we look at our lives out there. Um, and it's like, what did I do to deserve this? <clears throat> like we, <clears throat> we live in a little cabin in the woods, ocean view. And we have fresh water that has no fluoride and it's like underwater mountain spring water. Um, there's no fineries around us. Like it's just clean air. Uh, awesome. I barefoot and go down a little rainforest to the ocean and have time to read my Bible. And it's just like, I'm experiencing freedom. 
and I feel like I'm in God's thumbprint because there's so much nature there mm -hmm. and it's so quiet. And like, like you asked earlier before this, like, what's it like being back in the city? It's loud, it's noisy and it's, it's like, everything's there at the, at the hand. But there, when you're living a life of discomfort, you have to be willing to sacrifice and trade up. And so we were just willing. We were willing to like, let's just do what the what the 90 percenters aren't willing, I guess. Like I was just tired of being in rush hour traffic every day. Now I get up and walk to work. It's like three minutes and I'll, it's the island vibe, right? It's like, hey, you coming into work today? It's like, yeah, I think I'll be there. I'm going to come in at 11. <laughs> You <laughs> you aligned yourself with your dreams and passions and you yep. prioritized mm -hmm. what's best for you. And along that, mm -hmm. it has given you freedom. Yeah. And, it, and you, you have to think about it constantly. Mm -hmm. Almost like obsessive about it, like in a way of like what life... We should have been asked instead of what do you want to do when you grow up with the rest of your life, what kind of life do you want to live? What that's aligns, what we should be asking. Yeah, what aligns with your yeah, values. Because right. I find I have talked to some people who have it all. They're mm. they just graduated uni, they're living a great life yeah. according to what society deems mm. as perfect. Like the keeping up the Joneses? Yes. Yeah. Nice uh good vacations, mm. nice nice house. Pension uh, plan. Yeah. Um which is important. But often these People don't really introspect, think about what they truly want. Mm. So you get caught yeah. up in that because you had mentioned that freedom to you is just going with what made you fulfilled mm -hmm. and you followed your dreams and your you and your wife talked about it and you guys just did it. Well, yeah. everything around you, there was a lot of suffering and you had said that last year was one of the darkest moments of your it life. That wasn't a, you made did any you did not make that an excuse mm -hmm. to not go for it. Yeah. Right. Sure, you wanted to be there for your your wife's uh, mm -hmm. father who has dementia for mm -hmm. for uh, a pa a loved one that's passed away. Yeah. So you still couldn't now. forget. Yeah. You still couldn't forget about you. That there are the girls that rely on you. There is mm -hmm. your wife, and you do have this life yeah. filled with abundance, joy, and opportunity. Yeah. And you are looking healthier. Oh, very very healthy thank you uh, i lost you, weight too being yeah congrats and stress awesome. stress too I'm happy was, for you i was super stressed yeah my eye was yeah. twitching for that's months no I, i've had that like lots of stress you mm -hmm. just your eyes your body reacts yeah. like your body tells you hey yeah. stop hey change things yeah. uh, you need to like sure it's great to have discipline and you should do hard things but mm -hmm. it's also good to know enough <laughs> and when to reach out so mm -hmm. like you said earlier talking communicating i I reached out to my mentor. I'm like, I'm struggling here. I'm getting buried. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Motorhome's not working, putting money into it. We were planning to get out of here. We had to be at our house. We're in my parents' house, living in their basement. And my ego took a hit. And I'm like, what am I doing? He's like, number one question, What? how's your church game? I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's COVID. Yeah. I've been watching online. He's like, yeah. number one, get your family back to church. So they can help. They can outsource. And actually, mm -hmm. it was we went back to SPAC. And the second I did go to church, things started to align a little bit more. SPAC's a great thing. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, uh, SPAC is the Shored Park uh, Alliance. Alliance it's a big church. church. It's a lot of people. And yep. for those of you that oh, find church boring, mm -hmm. <laughs> for find, yep. kind of just you're, you're falling asleep, SPAC. Um, just where, where is that located? It's like near That's the, just uh, on Y Road, I think. Yeah, yeah, near Y Road. It's yeah. a be beautiful place. Yep. To, to go and you feel connected and even if you're not you yeah know, religious it's you know? just the message that gets yeah. put out there it's you'll find it's gold amazing. nuggets except everybody accepts each other yeah. and there's something powerful like joe rogan's starting to see that like well, there's something powerful about a group of people getting no churches are perfect like they have their issues mm -hmm. i think it's even said the enemies in the schools the churches in the homes right but you take it with a grain of salt that's what i've learned uh, people always complain that they, they didn't talk enough scripture mm -hmm. Then the next week they talk about scripture. That was too much scripture. Yeah. It's perspective. And yeah. you have to be willing to be humble enough just to, you know what? It doesn't cost us anything. And um, well, as soon as I went to church and got around the people, it, it just brought me back down to like 
okay, what's the game plan? And then it allowed God back into my life even more. Amazing. So it was crazy. What led you to follow this path of Christ? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think my life was dirty. It was dirty. I was uh, in a metalhead, vocalist in a metal band, deathcore metal band. I had the skull rings. I had, I even had a shirt with an upside down cross on it. I wasn't a Satanist. I just didn't even, I thought Protest Hero was a cool band. Yeah. I didn't even notice the shirt had that image on it. It's like my life was surrounded around darkness. I had it all, I wore all black. I mean, I still kind of do, but I got Yahweh yeah. in there. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was, I think the seed was planted when I was a kid. I would hang out with my friend, my neighbor, and they would go to church every Sunday. And I remember, I was like, I want to go. It was my choice. It wasn't pushed on me. I was just like, and it was SPAC, actually. So I went there as a kid. It was uh, SPAC. As a a kid? Yeah. And I would, we'd go once in a while. My parents were like, I think I like that. My parents were like, I just find it so interesting that he wants to go to church. It's like, they weren't like, why would you want to go to church? Or they weren't against it. They weren't for it. They were just neutral about it. And I think that really helped. My parents don't have like, there's something happening to them now, now that my dad's getting really sick and my mom's coping with that. It's really neat to see like my pastor has prayed for them and there's something happening. My, I got my dad reading the Bible the other day, which is crazy. I've never seen that. Um, so he's coming to terms with what if there is afterlife? Because he used to say, when I go on worm food, and I was like, well, if that's what you want, dad, maybe that's what you'll get. But I choose to believe that we will see our family again. And it's better believe in something than nothing, right? And um, yeah, that so... And then just learning about Christ. It just felt like it's always been there. I could always hear him. People might think that, oh, you're crazy. But it's the crazy ones that change the world, the people that are different. And um, I just knew I didn't want to keep continuing. A lot of people say, why did you leave the band? You guys had something good. I'm like, it was that rock and roll lifestyle of drugs and alcohol. And people would, it was all free. I worked in bars as a cook and like alcohol was free. And you'd stay in these bars till three in the morning getting a hammer. Yeah. No, and it was just toxic, and that's, I mean, that's where I met my wife. Good things can come out of it, but once we branched away from it and gave that old life up, mm-hmm. sometimes when you go to, like, personal grow or you go on uh, your guy after God's heart, people will choose not to go with you. Like, and they'll say, you left them behind. And it's like, no, they chose not to come with me. There's that crab analogy, right, where mm-hmm. all the crabs are caught, and one will realize that the thing's open, it'll crawl out, but the other crabs will grab and pull them back down. <laughs> so... Who do you have in your life that's pulling you down? And doesn't mean you have to get rid of them, but maybe the healthy distance, right? Yeah. So I just, yeah, and learning more about Christ, I love the fact that he challenged the law. He questioned authority. He was kind of a rebel. He rolled with the misfits, you know, like he would, he, he, he was accepted hurt. everyone. Yeah. And like the tax collector, like oh, that guy's a traitor. He's like, yeah, but, he, and they're like, he's different. He can get used to different, right? Like, it's just crazy that, Jesus was like the ultimate one-upper. It was always how he answered questions. It's fascinating when you go into the Bible and you just, it can, some people look at like a boring read, but it depends where you are in your life. Um, and my mom is at a part where in her life where she needs more guidance and wisdom, what she's dealing with. And I showed her, I'm like, look at the context of the Bible. It shows you like when you're worried about one of your sons that are going through this, She's like, oh, there it is right there. I'm like, anger. And there's like a bunch of things. Answers are all there. Yeah. The Bible is a library where you can just dive in. And um, I heard a thing on George Janko where he said, if you're a Christian and you're not reading your Bible, maybe you don't love God as much as you think you do. Because could you imagine if your father left you a bunch of notes and you never read them? Like, would you just put them away? You wouldn't, right? And there's another good quote, uh, Dusty Bibles lead to dirty lives. Mm-hmm. I love that quote. Every the answers are all there. Dude, it was the first book bestseller yeah. of all time. <laughs> yes, totally. You you mentioned that when you were younger, you were taking to SPAC for the very first time, and mm-hmm. you had not gone to church before this, and you weren't religious at all before this. No, and your family they they didn't believe at all. My mom and dad. They may have had a bit of a faith, but nothing like, they didn't pray or anything. They just, they would like, and they weren't actively talking to God. So there's something there, but it was never talked about in the home. I just remember seeing, I think it was like the parents of my friends. And I, I like the, the mom's conviction. She was convicted, just a happy lady and a little quirky and cheesy, but she was 
there was something about her that just stood out and um yeah i just like i'll go check it out i don't remember learning anything and there was selfish things i remember there was a girl that i knew that was in that day school or sunday school and i was like mm-hmm. Oh, she's yeah. in there. I'm definitely going. So maybe that's, that's like when you're a young boy. Right? That's that's <laughs> right? only normal. That's why um, I couldn't pay attention to school. They encouraged you to go, but then I I had a talk with uh, my mom. We were at Galaxy Land, and mm. I looked at my. It was my brother's sixth birthday, and I looked at just how scared this kid was to go on the bumper cars, to go on the little motorcycles. It is intense. And, it is intense. <laughs> you walk into that around, place. Yeah, p- kids are running around. Yeah. Wow, it's his first time. <laughs> The roller coaster. Yeah. And I started pondering on encouragement and how we all kind of pushed him, not too much, right? To the point where he would kind of yeah. assert himself and mm. kind of go within. And eventually he did gain some confidence wow. and he did kind of go in the roller, co- uh, didn't go in the roller coaster, but little motorcycle, then yeah. the horses and the bumper cars. And he went in the mm. swings with me. You know, that century, the swings. Yeah. Like, yeah. Amazing. Going around. He was a little bit scared with that. I think that was a bit too it's much for us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but encouragement, like, had your parents t- told you that, hey, don't go there. Hey, don't do this. Mm. Hey, don't be nice to other people. Hey, th- you don't, you don't have, don't have confidence in yourself. Mm. You'd be a different person. Absolutely. And I, I saw this, I, this just came to mind to me that there are some people out there that, that I know mm-hmm. that do not have any confidence at all. And I always wonder, were they encouraged by their parents or mm. they, this is Christ in their lives or they mm. do they have something to stand for that's right and I think that encouragement the big push the big support system is yeah. so crucial to yeah. all facets of life that's what I love about friends and ponder on the people in your life that are rooted and valued like they they're deeply rooted with their values and if they're not easily offended then you know they have the confidence yeah. and we live in a very like hashtag offended culture I'm offended by you being offended. We are very things. offended. That's why I always watch my mouth now. Like yeah. I don't make as many jokes as I used to, or with with the with strangers. No, you're proud. No, yeah, you gotta out. you gotta know. Okay, is this person just gonna go to the HR? Or is this person just gonna forgot about hate that. you? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. No, Christ is beautiful, man, and He's taught us so many things. And even if you don't fully believe. Mm-hmm. in christ you don't believe in an afterlife yeah. embodying what he's all about you don't have to do anything you have nothing yeah. to lose like yeah my mom was saying i sent her a picture or a video like because i baptized my niece in uh a beautiful actually it's a place called jordan river which is incredible to see that's awesome yeah beautiful place mountain rocks everywhere and she's just going through hell too and mm-hmm. she's ready and uh so baptized her and my two daughters and I said, to my mom, she's like, what are you doing there? I was like, just baptize me. She's like, I'm really thinking about your dad and afterlife. And uh, I think you should baptize him. And I was like, it's actually easier than that, mom. She's like, what do you mean? I was like, all you have to do, like, let's say Jesus is knocking on your door. Instead of just keep not answering the door, you just have to let him in and announce it. Like I looked up the verse. I was like, this is I actually left it out by accident. That's what my dad read yesterday. He was reading that. So she's like, can you talk to him? Can you talk to him? And I'm like, well, it'll come up. Yeah. I, I don't want to force it. And I accidentally left that verse out because I was going to show my mom. And then I went upstairs and we came down. He was reading it. So it's just crazy that he's like, it's just all it is is just confess that you have a Lord and Savior and let him into your life Incredible. and you're saved. You will have eternal life. That's it. I mean, he died for our sins. The Lord shows up in some people. So, oh, and talks to people. It's yeah, amazing. It's, you see the beauty in life once mm-hmm. you start looking for. Things that are of positivity, that yeah. are of meaning. Yeah. There's meaning to every single thing that we do. Yeah, and, yeah. and to be bold, to step out and like, so I had a buddy at ATS actually, and he was, he was an atheist, um, and he was brought up Catholic, and I think it was just pushed too hard on him to the point where he just wanted nothing to do with it. And we'd debate about God and this and that, healthy debates, mm-hmm. until one day he, I was like, are you okay? And he's like, oh no, my dad is, uh, tried taking his life last night, and I was like, do you want me to pray for your dad right now? And he's like, yeah. I thought for sure he'd be like, no, yeah. it's okay. Don't worry about it. In your head, you have that battle of being vulnerable and being like, should I pray? And I've chickened out a lot on this, but you don't know what that moment of, what's the worst they can say? No. Yeah. Like, I know no, exactly. I don't want to. No, yeah. I don't. Don't pray for me. 
Yeah, and usually people are nice about it. Like, no, I will. And then be like, okay, give me his name. I'll, I'll pray for him when I go home. But it's something when you put your hand on someone and you do it right then and there. And I could just feel a relief come off him. I don't know if he was saved after that, but I just know that I did my part. And the power of prayer is so important. So I just, yeah, you let Jesus in your life and watch what happens. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's change person. Incredible. How did you overcome addiction? Hmm. That, that's another one. So when I got baptized, I knew that I was like, I made a covenant with God now. So I let him in my life. And I think for a while there, I thought baptism is what was going to save me. But then I realized it's more of like a declaration of like, hey, guys, here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm killing my old self and coming into the new. And it just held me to a higher standard. And it's like you make a promise with somebody. You don't want to break it, right? So like... I want to be, and I still struggled, like I, drugs and alcohol, uh, but it was having kids too. I remember Naira like holding her with the beer and uh, it just, you have to, I reached out to my mentor and I was like, hey, I have like porn addiction. I have, it's, it, that happened at a young age too. So it, porn is such a nasty one that it can seep in and I don't even want to know how the kids have access to it now. Because mine was a magazine. No, it's, I found my brother's stash. And I was like eight or nine. Lots of my friends. Actually, uh, two podcasts before this. Yep. Um, the guy just opened up at his, his porn addiction. Yeah. And it just took over his life. And oh, that's man. all when he had come across it in grade six. And yep. just It doesn't just, take much. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of kids showing each other. And it's mm-hmm. just such a powerful. It's like a drug. Yeah. Right? It's potent. And it should be freaking banned. Because it, like, it yeah. destroys. Yeah. Our minds, it actually, like part of my sex life was n- not what it should be because that's what I thought growing up seeing that yeah. is like, so I had to like, my wife would teach yeah. me like, you know, this is porn. It, we don't want the intensity of that. They want the connection. There's not a lot of connection in porn. Like it's just a dirty thing. Mm-hmm. And I just see what it's doing to families and some of my closest friends, they struggle with it. And they asked, how did you quit? And I was like, I just... I reached out to my mentor and he said, you have to truly ask yourself, do you want to quit? Like, do you want it? Are you? And recently I would talk, I was talking to him about addictions and how do we give them up? Because I don't know if you'll ever really stop becoming an alcoholic. You just have to learn to live above it. And uh, he said something very interesting. He said, because he's like, are you on the throne of your life? Are you putting God on the throne? Have you pushed God off? So if we're, about our addictions and drinking and everything, me, me, whoa, whoa, I, I, we're sitting on the throne of our own life. So we've removed God from it. So what we need to do is put God back on the throne. Hey, God, help me out here. I'm struggling. It's not serving me. I put you back on the throne and that will do something. Um, That's made a huge difference to remind myself, like, am I sitting on the throne or am I allowing God? And so, um, yeah, addictions is a tough one. Um, everything in our society wants us to go towards sin. When, I mean, we got married in Vegas, which is like Sin City. I kind of <laughs> yeah. regret that, but like, yeah. we, did, we didn't know. And we've done things in the past that, uh, and yeah, my dad knows about somehow. I must have told him, and he's like, well, I would never do that. And I was like, well, congratulations, you're a better man than me, but I am a sinner and always will be. And we're always going to screw up, make mistakes. Just have to give it to God and give it back to him. And yeah, I just like sober me versus not sober me. And then when you, like, if you go to a party and you're the only sober one, it's alarming. You get to Have you see seen just how dude dumb, how... It's scary. It's like, I used yeah. to, how's that guy? Like, yeah. You look over there and, the, like, what does this guy say? Oh, like, what, why does he, it doesn't look fun. Yeah. It doesn't. It's so accessible. Yeah. Alcohol is every, look how many liquor stores it's, are in everywhere. It's one of the only drugs that are accepted. And it's one of the only drugs where if you tell people you don't indulge in it, yeah. they wonder if there's something wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. It does expose people. Sometimes when you're like, I'm going to quit, it forces them to look in the mirror. And like, you look like during COVID, you could, you couldn't go to certain places, but the alcohol stores were open. Yeah. Cannabis yeah. stores. So it's, it's like, it was substance. included in the, um, what was it called again? The, uh, there was about, 
there's like restaurants or like yeah. fast foods they were open and that's a long they kind of categorized that with alcohol as well like this is a need everything for your soul that's good yeah. for your soul is not, not allowed <laughs> massages <laughs> yeah. church yeah. Uh, acupuncture yeah. it's like yeah. no yeah and then but you can go and get hammered at a bar yeah. as long as we spit yeah. you in a little booth yeah. but yeah it's yeah um and i just like i just ask myself like is this sinful and you'll get the debates too like is drinking mm-hmm. a sin mm-hmm. i don't think so but overindulgence um drunkenness that's when it becomes an issue so So you went about life and you thought that you were all alone but Mm -hmm. as soon as you saw that these flaws that that was stored internally were of substance that you can get rid of through christ Mm -hmm. having that other that higher power Mm -hmm. to be able to look after you and Mm-hmm. guide you mm-hmm. has liberated you oh yeah yeah is that did they kind of absorb did i yeah i like the man i become and you just replace things like instead of drinking all the time do smoothie mm-hmm. replace it the gym but then you sometimes people the gym addiction will happen where it's like then i've lost friends to steroids and stuff right so it's all in like the moderation don't go overboard because like when you replace one thing with one thing, it can go take over. So it's a balance. You have to have the balance. I've just replaced like drugs for ADD with meditating and Amazing. barefoot. And like you've done like in the, today I went out in the snow barefoot and just did some Qigong yeah. and just exercise and felt amazing. My feet were freezing. It felt so good. Jen and we were talking about the, the daily habits. Yeah. And like um, advice for addiction is... Mm-hmm. Put the big guy back on your throne. And so it's, yeah. it's it's not like a uh, willing of like, because what I used to say and my friends would struggle is I can't, I can't, I can't. It's not I can't, they're just not willing yet. Mm-hmm. And you have to just look, is this serving my life? Is this going to help me down the road? Mm-hmm. Um, how many people have we lost to, you know, I just lost a childhood friend to liver damage, which is crazy too. So this is another sidetrack. If you have someone on your mind, you're thinking of them, mm-hmm. reach out to them because you have no idea that I think I believe that's God or the universe, whatever people believe. But I think he's putting it on your heart because I was doing a wedding and on the island there. And uh, I kept thinking of Leah. She's like my childhood friend. I'm like She's popping up in my dreams. Again, the dreams, very vivid, vivid dreams. And um, it was like us playing around. I'm like, And it was almost like every night I was dreaming of her. I'm like, why is she coming into my dreams? It's so weird. And I remember thinking that night, I was like, I should reach out to her. I know she was struggling with stuff. And I kid you not, the next day, my mom, I got the message, the text mm. that I that everyone dreads and hey, Leah is in the hospital and she probably has four or five days to live. Her liver is failing. And I was like, I've been having dreams of her. And she's like, well, there you go. And I really regret not, re- not like I could save her, but I just wish I would have reached out. You know, she's on Facebook. I could have, it, it could take just two seconds. Besides so earlier. if you're thinking of someone and they're on your mind, reach out to them. You just, you never know. What are the uh, daily habits that you embody now? Uh, it's changed a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll do, I wait, it's, I'm spoiled too. So my girls bring me coffee in bed. Oh, that's, it's that's it's awesome. so cool. They come up with the coffee. They know how daddy likes it, a little bit of maple syrup. <laughs> and uh, I get up and I, I try to read the Bible. Uh, I get distracted, try not to grab my phone. Mm-hmm. And I'll just go into the word and I like to read the word with the girls, right? And then we pray. We pray as much as we can, especially for a meal when we sit down and have breakfast. We put on good vibration music. Um, Yeah, I'll do a little stretch in with them, prime their brains because we do homeschooling. So that's a fun thing too. And we just get them ready for the day. Um, And try not to start a day in chaos. Just be slow and and, um, attentive and be there and uh everything go like gratitude list is huge wake up and just write down three things that you're grateful for and ask god to move you through the day help you through challenges protect you because you never know if you're going to make it home that day when you go to work right it's not set in stone it's not guaranteed it's that not guaranteed. your safety is yeah prioritized because you never know when yeah. life will just be gone Yep. And, um, the fact that you've woken up today, the fact that we woke where we've been blessed, 
you know, the enemy wakes up and, he, oh no, Admin's awake. Yeah. You know, like he, he doesn't want us to get out there and be positive and shine brightness and be the salt, right? So, um, yeah, I just try to do things that maybe other people aren't doing, like go barefoot and walk down this path to the ocean and then just read a book, 15 minutes to a book or a, a podcast, something positive, uh, garbage in, garbage out. So what are you you speaking? What are you listening to? Be careful what you're listening to, right? Sometimes I'll just go through my list and delete songs that I'm not good. But prayer is first, eating good, drinking the water, um, yeah, just taking my vitamins and just taking care of my body, my mind and health is, awesome. I think, crucial. Daily routines are important to write down like what you want to do. I do a little qigong exercise that just gets everything going and yeah, prepare for the day. Make your bed. Start with making your bed. There's a book called Make Your Bed First and that the little win of the day starts and does the ripple effect for a little wins. Snowball effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they have to do in the military. It's the first thing they learn is like, I think, is make their bed mm-hmm. and like to a T. So that's a big so one. You're- doing everything that you can for success and you prepare your armor, your yeah. mind, your body, your soul yeah. with the right tools so that mm-hmm. you can give to the world. Yeah. And you have gratitude, you have gratitude, huge a connection, mm-hmm. uh, authenticity, mm-hmm. just following your dreams and purpose. And this has given you a lot to work with. Yeah. Yeah. It- it, yeah, you have to, and like, if you don't stay diligent, obedient in the consistency to that, you'll slide off really easy. And then you're not eating healthy. And then you're, you know, like if you don't stick to the routines, you could, it's easy to go off course. So you want to try your best to, for me, it's just to stick to it. Um, um, I have daily readers are good too, like uh, journals and stuff. So it keeps you on track. If you're a checklist guy, and you want to check things off what you're doing throughout the day um like devotionals and stuff so mm-hmm. there's always things you can do that to start your day and i think the earlier you can wake up the better i noticed my days are better i still struggle with that though i have been so spoiled because ats i would wake up at five in the morning to get to work it's still dark out I'd leave my kids didn't even say bye to them because they're sleeping and then come home to like have a few hours with them now i sleep until nine and then they're bringing me coffee in bed. So like, I've been a little spoiled and the lazy starts to seep in. So I'm like, Hey, you know what? I gotta, I do like to enjoy the sleeping in. Cause I used to say, I don't want to wake up to alarm clock anymore. Now I don't. So it's cool. Like I start my own day, but you can easily get into a rhythm of like complacency. So you gotta be careful of that too. Uh, yeah. It's just trying every day, right? What works, what doesn't mm-hmm. that. Yes. And just never tweaks. Yeah. Little tweaks. Yeah. I, uh, What's big for me is self-introspection. Cause I, I haven't heard that word. Yeah, I, I at the end of the day, I ask myself, okay, did I, what's something that I can, I can improve on? What's mm. something that I did or I am doing that I know is bad for me? Ooh, self-analyze. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Assessing. And That's there's good. a lot of answers that come up. There are times where I am tested and I do indulge, mm. I do choose the path of least resistance. Mm. <laughs> and you know what? I just, I ask for forgiveness and mm-hmm. I try again the next day and then the next day. And mm. I feel when people put too much guilt into the mistakes that they do, mm. it just turns into this whole catastrophe. Yeah. You don't want to live in uh shoulda, woulda, coulda. Yeah. That's, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's the danger zone. And when you do make a mistake, it is the end of the world. It's not. No. And we're meant to face storms and run through it sometimes. There's, uh, what's the analogy of like the ox, the sheep that will like run away? Yeah. And then they kept getting, they keep getting the chased by the storm. But if you run towards the Buffalo storm. Buffalo will run right through it. Yeah. Run right through it. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. The eagles yeah. will like face the storm yeah. over their nets that, and just like crouch down. Is that real to nature though? Is I that, think so. Like a bull actually charges the storm. I'm pretty sure that's what the, yeah. they've seen happens. There's certain animals that like cower away from it, and it's like a good thing to think about. Like, are you running from the storm, or are you just like, I want to teach my kids to not be in fear, and like, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'm scared of this. We'll do it. Barbers do hard things, mm-hmm. right? Well, like uh, your brother, if he was scared, but I'm sure after he did the first leap of faith, he was having a blast. Yeah. It's always cool to see that with kids too. And they're like 
You were afraid of that at first. Like when my daughters got to the island, they were scared of walking on the boulders. Yeah. Now they're like little forest free range kids that are just like they don't wear jackets. People are like, they don't wear jackets? Like no, yeah. they just, just jump. Break the nature. <laughs> um, Amazing. So what keeps you going? Uh, definitely my creator. Um, my girls, my wife, um, th they're all such precious gifts that's been given to me and life's so short. And it, like we said, it's not guaranteed. Um, you just don't know when your last day on earth is. So life is so precious and, um, you just have to find what motivates you and, um, what inspires you. And if you know, we all know if we're doing something that's like, I'm not living to my true potential, like, um, yeah, like I just, it's the gratitude thing. Every day I wake up, I'm like, I, I get to live another day. And that's what keeps me going. I've had moments where I'm like, am I meant to be here? You get in your head, you know, like, oh, maybe the world would be better without me. But then that's the enemy speaking into your head because he hates us. <laughs> wants us to suffer. Yeah. Wants us <clears throat> to look down on ourselves, yeah. to question everything. That's right. Actually, that reminds me, there's a good, um, I guess, analogy. <clears throat> the junior devil said to senior, so his dad, he's like, what's the plan to take over? And he's like, it's very simple. We will create so much noise that they can't hear their God. And look look at our world. It's very loud and like weapons of mass distraction, phones, right? So porn addiction. Like, so you just have to watch your vices and yeah, and reach out to people. And sometimes it'll be your families that can't help you because they... They might not be going through that, so they can't relate. So I know I've had family members like, oh, it's, it's a little bit, it's gonna, not gonna hurt, you know, but, and I've had friends say like, oh, you look so happy when you're in a metal band. I was like, I wasn't. On the outside, I look happy. I had the long hair and like a little bit of 15 minutes of fame, but I was not happy. I was uh, just in a dark place, but it looked good on the outside. There were those short term hits where, mm -hmm. yeah, sure, it's very, yeah. you're happy in that moment because mm -hmm. you're intoxicated, because you're yeah. on drugs. You're or, numbing out. You're numbing out, mm -hmm. and that can be misconstrued for happiness, but yeah. it's just numbing the pain, mm -hmm. and it's there's no fulfillment in it. Yeah, and I think to add on to like what keeps you going is... Um, don't allow people to put you in a box. So if you're a Christian, you're going to be, oh, you don't like gay people. I love gay people. I just, I love them where they're at. Yale to jail. It doesn't matter. Um, just love people. Love your neighbors. Um, yeah. I, I've, you network, you get put in boxes. People make notions about you, but you don't, just don't, just respond versus, you know, or, yeah, you don't want to react. When we react, we make a fool of ourselves. And it's hard not to. We don't want to get offended, right? But um, that's another one that keeps me going is, uh, you know, if I've been labeled with ADD, let's use it as a superpower. I don't look at it as like a disorder. A lot of, we were hopped up on sugar as kids eating cereal and then you go into a classroom and the kids can't stay still. They're distracted. So uh, what if it's something with your brain, you just look at things a little differently. So that's one that helped me out a lot. For sure. I keep yeah. moving. How would you advise someone that wants to make a big change in their life? Is change possible? Yeah, it's, I think it's necessary and extremely important because change freaks people out. No one seems to like change, but then when you do it, you're like, well, that wasn't so bad. Um, what every change I've made in my life, there's been more, I'm glad I did it than regrets. So I think it's necessary. It, it just depends who you want to be. Um, if I hadn't made the change to pack up my family and move, and they wanted it too, I don't even know, yeah, like if I didn't have kids or if I didn't have mentors in my life, I don't think I'd be married. I wouldn't have kids. So if I didn't have the right people in my life to be willing to make a change, and I think it's just like, I think there's something here of John Maxwell. That's why I brought this because I knew we would discuss some change. Mm -hmm. um, what is it right here? Just a quick little one. We can change our whole life and the attitude of people around us simply by changing ourselves. So it starts with it. And this, you can have this too. This is a bookmark. 
I made an ATS a while back. And oh, I thank you, man. I think the front yeah. part's about change. You can even read that out. I actually put stuff like this on my wall. This one here on this side is changed, but check that this out. One? Yeah. yeah, I found that this morning. I was like, oh, I'm bringing In that to Adam. In order to change your life outside, you must change inside. The moment you are willing to change, it is amazing how the universe begins to help you. It brings you what you need. Cool, eh? Yeah. Yeah, th that's, that's awesome. Yeah, keep that. I mean, thank you. Change thank is necessary. Um, if you're not willing to change, I find you are staggering. And then you'll just, I'm not willing to be, uh, I don't want to live a life of average. You know, I want to live a life of adventure and just, and you have to do the things that make you uncomfortable. And that's when like real change happens. If you're willing to step out and leap, that is, that's when he'll send the blessings. True growth happens is mm -hmm. when you are under immense pressure, when you are uncomfortable. That's how diamonds are created. Mm -hmm. They're coal, and then they go through the pressure, and they become a... And when... To not give up, too. Like, sometimes there's, the, there's that picture of, like, the two guys digging for the diamond. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, oh, I've been digging all day, and, and I'm done. But then it's, it's right, right there. It's One more dig, right they could there. have had it. It's like, you just never know. You I just push on. That's what gives me so much hope, mm -hmm. and makes me so forward-thinking. Yeah, hope is I, forward, too. It's just one more day of, okay, that's going to be the day where I can show my dad that I love him more. Or mm -hmm. that's going to be a day where I can reinforce into my brother that he is cared for. Or that yeah. is the day where I can help a person in need. That's good. One more day. One more day, yeah. Because maybe today is just the day where I'm just working. You know, just like one less, um, one more day until I choose, get to live my dream. And that's all we can do, really. T t take advantage of the day. That's amazing. Love yeah. that. Is there any advice for those that are suffering out there? <sighs> Why should they keep going? Uh, yeah, because you matter. Um, God's not finished with you. Again, you've woken up today for a reason. He doesn't make junk. No, I love that saying. God doesn't make junk, right? Um, he's not finished with you. There's a reason um, we wake every day. Um, and life's just too short. And uh, there's people that can help. Um, it's just, it's never too late. Like, um, sometimes we'll feel so hopeless. And if, like you said earlier, if you're not talking about it and communicating about it, it's going to eat up inside of you and you're going to hold on to it. And it's just, it'll eat you from, sin will like eat you from inside. And it's not to say like, I'm not better than anyone else. I have sins. Like, I'm, I'll always be a sinner. I've sometimes said, like, someone asked me, like, well, oh, you're, you're a Christian, so you get to go to heaven. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I belong to kind of a polluted world in a way, and if he's willing to take me, that'd be great. But, um, yeah, there is there is that verse that scares a lot of people, that we think we're doing good. We could be doing so much more. Um, like, it's with uh, faith without works right or something and i can't remember how that one goes but we can be doing so much more and um a lot of people believe that they're they're good to go because they're nice but what if god was like on the judgment day or whatever what if he's like yeah you're nice but away from me for i never knew you that's a scary scripture because it's like I, I, you didn't let me in. I was knocking at your door. And all you had to do is just let me into your life. Let me into your heart. And be kind to your neighbor. Stop gossiping. Watching the words you're saying. It's as easy as that. But sometimes I think, even as a Christian, I go to church on Sunday. I'm saved. It's, that's not it. It's more to it. It's, it's making someone smile, um, serving. That's why I want to be a server. of. To serve God is to serve others. And I want to make an example by... Um, just taking my eyes off myself and put it onto other people. I think it's all, it's, yeah. Um, and we all go through suffer. It's in our darkest times is when he's watching, I believe, is like, come on, you got this. Let me in. Give it to me. Give me your sins. Give me your your trials and tribulations. You're not alone. No. Yeah. And so we feel like we are. And then, like, you talk about it, it's like, there, they're going through worse. And you're like, geez, I thought my hangnail was an issue. <laughs> right? It has been an incredible conversation, man, and 
thank you yeah for thank coming you for on the uh, long-term podcast it's it's an honor to yeah. be on here it's yeah. been one of my dreams yeah. to be on a podcast <laughs> yeah. dreams come true guys yeah yeah i think there's a lot of people that would derive great value into this and, yeah i hope yeah. so if, if take what you can um yeah and i just should we say a quick prayer yeah sure let's do it let's do it let's do it all right heavenly father i thank you for this day i thank you for advent and i just wish the best of success and put the coolest people in front of him um he's an amazing person and you've given him such a cool um attitude and mindset and i'm just grateful to know him and father just bless the people that sit in this chair for years to come lift them up move in their hearts and uh we see your work we love you god and uh yeah i just say these things in jesus name amen amen Thank you, Brandon. Amazing. And as always to everyone, you are not alone. There is a place for you in this world. Mm -hmm. Keep it long term. Yeah. Pray for peace. That's right. Peace and love. I love it. That was awesome, bro.